Hello and welcome. Good morning, good afternoon to our webinar today for the NICE Oracle Management Pack for System Center Operations Manager. I'm happy to welcome you on today's webinar and I uh, um, will give you today an overview of our product for best in class Oracle monitoring with System Center Operations Manager. So I start with a quick introduction about who we are, who NICE is, as well about uh, the advantages we bring to your current system center center investment and then we actually drill down in the uh, Oracle database monitoring and then uh, we go over to a live demo environment. So NICE is a premier software development company and IT professional services company here in Germany. We have uh, offices in different uh, locations uh, as well in the United States and California for support for our North American and South American customers. So we've been around since over 20 years and, and basically have a lot of cross-platform experience uh, today uh, in monitoring different applications. Um, we built this uh, development experience through our partners with HPE and Microsoft, Oracle, IBM and others and continuously grow our uh, uh, development environment. So to distribute our software, we typically use partners in most areas around the world. So uh, if you have any requirement for a partner or need additional professional services in your region, then please feel free to reach out to us. Um, just to give you a quick overview about the customers we're working with and clients, uh, they're um, mainly uh, focused on North America and uh, Europe, but also in other regions around the world, uh, we have uh, a number of customers. So what do we do? Uh, we uh, do management packs and we do extensions to Hewlett Packard Enterprise to business technologies, um, primarily monitoring applications. So uh, we start with database applications and also the session today is about the database application. So it can be the Oracle, DB2, or also via partner, Sybase, ASE, or other databases. We work also with a partner in additional SQL server monitoring. So in case any need arises around database monitoring, uh, uh, please feel free to contact us. So we have other products here as well on the list, like uh, one I want to highlight is the log file management pack. It's a free product, so it's very easy to in, bring into your environment. Just go to our website and download it. So if you need a product to start with, uh, just feel free to pick that. And we uh, also provide Office 365 monitoring for an active management pack. Uh, this has this been uh, newly developed. So in case you have interest in that, also feel free to reach out to us. NICE is the number one vendor for cross-platform and application management packs. That means like there's uh, no other vendor in the world with such a large portfolio on cross-platform management packs. Uh, we are the number one go-to. We have a very strong um, relation to Microsoft. We work through the um, uh, Microsoft alliances, through our Microsoft alliances together with the product teams uh, in extending continuously the system center uh, portfolio as well the upcoming uh, portfolio on uh, Microsoft Azure. Well, that's that's all for the introduction. So uh, actually, give you let me give you an overview of our Oracle database monitoring. So uh, first, like a quick overview here. What do we actually do? So when you when you come to when it comes to Oracle monitoring with System Center, um, we typically start um, on a on a plain field. So because there are rarely a very specific requirements. If there are, we are typically happy. So please feel free to bring them to me because then we can actually go and see uh, where this matches the, uh, the offered functionality. But for many customers who don't have really, uh, just like they have a best practice product here, we offer this set of uh, monitors that have been developed over uh, 15 years now of Oracle management pack, uh, management uh, and monitoring experience. So it's really a good starting set to, uh, to, uh, to take off with. But on the other hand, if your Oracle team has already very good uh, requirements uh, for monitoring, that's, that's very, comes in very handy because then we can go in and match that against the existing functionality of metrics, performance rules and monitors. So, uh, which is really a, a large set. So uh, we have built this over the years and uh, continuously improving it. In any case, if there's something we do not cover, 
uh, which always might happen because you have a very specific requirement or your Oracle team has a very specific requirement. We offer the uh, functionality of the extensibility through user-defined configuration, which is the bullet number three on the slide. Um, and with this, your Oracle DBAs actually can define their own metrics, will then be reflecting it in monitors and performance rules on the SCUM console. Um, we have discovery, we have product knowledge, uh, basically what you expect from a, from a management pack. So question to you, have you used the Microsoft SQL Center Management Pack? So the SQL Server Management Pack is provided by Microsoft and is used in most environments. So, uh, and uh, most SCOM admins are familiar with that. So if you do, um, then you have already all the uh, technical uh, knowledge to also bring out uh, from a SCOM perspective, the Oracle Management Pack. There's some additional knowledge for the Oracle integration side required, but typically uh, this is uh, easily done by the Oracle DBAs. But from a SCOM perspective, there's a very uh, low learning curve. You do not need to have much new experience uh, because all the overrides, discoveries, everything feels very much like SCOM and you will see in a moment when we get to the demo. But before we get to the demo, I just actually want to highlight one more item on this slide is the enterprise readiness. Um, for those of you on the on this webinar for, for Oracle real application clusters uh, who know those terminologies, who are familiar with that, these Oracle, your Oracle DBAs, uh, there are critical for the production environment. So uh, DataGuard is also a solution to basically lock ship the transaction log to standby locations and apply them there to the uh, to the database to make uh, them fail safe and redundant. Uh, it is typically used in, in critical database while real application clusters more like a load balancing clusters, but we fully support both of them as well additional cluster technologies like Rack OneNote or DBVisit or any third or some third thought of third party add-ons that are used for Oracle. We also support just uh, ask if you have questions around that. So from an architecture, and this I promise is the last slide on, on text, we'll have the next slide on, on graphics. So uh, just like one more slide, just to give some ideas to you what drives our um, architecture, like where we start, like what are our like top themes that drive us, like, and the number one bullet is here. We always integrate to operation center, or the product you have invested on. So if you strategically work on System Center, you want to use System Center Operations Manager, we will completely add on to this. So that means you do not need to have separate consoles, you do not have to have separate proxies, and everything integrates. And for those who are using additional consoles on top of SCUM, like for instance, Squared Up or Savision, we also support them fully and have templates available for those. So um, that is something you can then also <clears throat> make use of, of course. So we basically leverage the investment you have done in your existing environment. Um, the second point here is, is important for us in case you have a larger environment. So uh, everything that goes above 50, 40, 50 uh, Oracle instances, uh, you need to consider how you scale, uh, especially in the Linux, Unix area, uh, because most of the workloads uh, in SCOM runs on the management servers and the, on the resource pool. And in that case, we highly recommend the agent-based solution. So. Uh, also, there's no single point of failure in that. We fully uh, use what is out there, the agent you have deployed. That actually means, which is a good thing for you, when you need to go to your firewall team, um, they will first ask you, is this new monitoring solution requiring any port changes, firewall openings? You can say, nope. We just need the one port for the agent, and everything will go through that. Um, and then further, actually, here, uh, there are some more things for Oracle DBAs. We, uh, we embrace them really because we have a couple of Oracle DBAs here, which uh, tell us always, well, uh, you can store the operation, the, the Oracle access credentials. So the Oracle access credentials being assist, uh, access credentials, you can store them in the SCOM database. We want to have them local in the system where we can maintain them, also following this agent-based approach. That's typically what they know from the grid, grid control, cloud control, uh, Oracle Enterprise Manager environment, where also an agent environment exists. So uh, and uh, these privileges indeed are maintained by the Oracle DBAs and, and uh, stored on the, on, on the Oracle server and, and not brought to another place from there. So uh, the whole solution, and I can say this as a 
product director, product owner here, uh, we make very sure that the Oracle management pack does not impact the Oracle server in a negative way. We have very strict quality uh, measures and assurances here at NICE that uh, will evaluate every new release and will measure performance before the management pack brought is, is up, brought out and after. So this way um, you can actually be ensured that the performance impact on the Oracle server is low. And if you want to do this test yourself, feel free to do so. You just measure the performance before you bring out the Oracle collector and after you, and you can see that there's only very marginal uh, increase in performance during the collection intervals. So now I, I think you're already excited to see how that whole thing works and everything falls into place. So uh, let's start with a little architecture overview. So um, ideally, your environment looks like this. Basically, you have on the right side, you have like a uh, Linux Unix environment or Windows, and I'll come to that in the next slide, uh, where you have an agent on there. Because this is the, the, the prerequisites we start with on the agent based side. As I mentioned, we also in the beginning, we also have the possibility to remotely manage that, but over 90% of our uh, customers are using the agent based approach. So with the agent out there, all the prerequisites are there. So we have a management group, you have SCUM 2012, 2016, 2012 R2, uh, or any of those versions that are supported by Microsoft. In the management group with the data warehouse, the ops manager database, and you see that here on, on the left side. So uh, let me pick a laser pointer here and show you a bit around. So in the next step, we will import, uh, or we'll look, well, we have the Oracle database obviously here as well. So um, and now the, the challenge actually, we want to Oracle monitor, or, or monitor the Oracle database here. So first we import the Oracle management pack um, into the, into the um, management group, just like any standard management pack, we import that. And in the next step, actually, we have something which is specific uh, to NICE, which is like a, a, a kind of a deployment process for additional files that are responsible to monitor Oracle. Um, here on the right side, you see the so-called instrumentation, which consists of the provider and the collector applications. So, and I like to explain these, these two components just briefly. The provider is a C component written in, uh, in the C language and compiled on each platform, which is very similar to the providers that are Microsoft providing, like for example, memory provider, CPU provider. Those are responsible for monitoring your CPU, your memory, your disk, your network interfaces, everything. Each of those has a separate provider and they're plug in to the agent, which is the oh my server, also referenced to in SCOM 2012 R2 and later. So uh, as this is all open source, source and you can look at this up on GitHub, we actually uh, use the same interface to, to uh, develop a provider by NICE, which actually allows us uh, to bring data to the agent and then follow exactly the same uh, data flow as all the other data that is being collected by Microsoft. To bring the data into the provider, we connect it or hook it up to our Oracle Data Collector application. So in this uh, Oracle Collector application is basically the core of the solution, um, which actually exists on each platform, being a Windows, Linux, Solaris, or HPOX server. Um, this collector is built for that specific platform, and it accesses Oracle via local connection or via a TNS connection, to query data from Oracle. And uh, then the data is calculated in the collector. So uh, for example, uh, we want to, we would like to calculate the growth of a table space. So we would like to calculate the growth of the database. So like a little bit advanced calculations, like with a Delta, for example, or some, using some history. So this is done here locally on the system. This has a really big advantage. While some other solution bring all the data to the to the ops manager database and then do calculation here or in workflows on a management server, we do everything locally. While this, it is very efficient and smart uh, and is fast because it's done in local in C language. It doesn't use many resources and it's distributed across all your Oracle server where this is done. And it's brought then once it, the data is condensed, it will bring it over to the management group and store it in the uh, ops manager database and data warehouse. So. Uh, this is, this is basically the architecture here. So uh, if there are any questions, uh, please uh, use the chat and, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to answer them as well. Oh yes, there's the, the log file monitoring. Um, we do 
extensively monitor the Oracle alert log. We have predefined uh, um, management parks for the Oracle logs to be monitored. So, but these are unsealed, as we call this in in SCOM. That means you can actually uh, modify and edit them according to your requirements. That means if your Oracle team has specific requirements to monitor Oracle logs, then you can easily um, do that. Yes, the permissions. Yeah, the permissions is also a good question. So how do we actually Oracle and what type of permissions we need to connect to Oracle? Um, we have very limited requirements only for that. That means we only have a user which allows to connect and retrieve data from the statistics tables or the system tables that contain information about the performance and the health of Oracle, as well as some inventory information. Um, the user role which we use is called catalog role. It's the Oracle catalog role. Uh, and it's a defined role which is purpose built by Oracle for the use of monitoring. So, uh, and besides that, we do not have any additional requirements uh, when we connect to Oracle. So uh, with that, you just need to have a user, assign it a catalog role, and then basically um, do the monitoring with that. And the username and password is stored here on the server in an encrypted format. So, um, oh yeah, there's one more item here in case uh, you have like, you, you do patching or you take one of the management servers out of the resource pool, uh, then the, the, uh, the connection will be immediately redirected to the other management server and uh, management group. So it's fully redundant actually. So you don't need to worry about that. That's already built in your agent monitoring. So uh, that, that is very uh, straightforward. Good. Um, I'll get just quickly touch on the Windows area as well. Um, here, the architecture is very similar. So we also import a management pack. We just have a different agent here. We have the Microsoft monitoring agent as an active agent uh, that monitors the, uh, the, the Windows server. And then also with the instrumentation, we add the, uh, the Oracle database. So uh, here we also have a provider, which is then not a C, but a C sharp uh, provider, which is a, a, dot, a .NET assembly uh, that is loaded by the uh, the monitoring agent and then uh, interfaces or has an adapter basically to Oracle collector application. So, uh, and then the collector application is, uh, is the same as on other platforms, it's just built for the different platforms. Okay, so um, any questions, please feel free to use the chat. I'll just keep continue. So, and uh, as I said, I promise not to make much more text slide. Uh, I will show you the top 10 monitors actually on the live environment. So, but as I mentioned, there are like 70 different uh, metrics that are on there. So, uh, and if there's something missing, you can still use the UDC. Um, I will touch uh, later a bit on the remote versus the local monitoring. There are some differences. Uh, if you're interested, then we can go later into that. Uh, but with this, I actually would like to go over to, to the live demo environment and uh, give me a moment and I'll actually pull up the live environment. Okay, good. So let's start with the dashboard view. So, um, in general, we have uh, in SCOM on the left side, the monitoring console. So you know this monitoring console probably pretty well already. So but in case you don't, I just cover very few topics. So we have the monitoring console, we have the authoring console here down at the left, the reporting console and the administration console. The in import of the management pack actually happens in the administration console and the authoring console. You can actually then author um, additional uh, monitors or thresholds. And then here on the left side under monitoring, you have like the different uh, folders we call them folder views, like for example, here for DB2, or we have the Microsoft SQL Server folder view. And if you expand it, you see a number of other views uh, below it. Also for Oracle, we have the, the folder views here, which are created when you import the management pack. So here then uh, we have a number of views and I'd like to just start with the Oracle Server Dashboard view, which I pulled up here. So this is designed to give you a, like an overview of your Oracle environment. So if you come in the morning into the office, you want to see what is the status of the Oracle environment, you can actually go in here and you see, well, you just got like a couple of alerts on here um, and nothing is critical. And uh, But if you consider, for example, this one here, like the Oracle Pluggable Database, not open to be a critical, sure enough, you can actually change 
that. So uh, um, I will also log in in a moment to a system and, and shut the instance down. So to actually see how that behaves. So actually, let me do this right now. So I'm logged in here to the environment. We see here at the top, it's Sys04, uh, sorry, Sys05. And we are already uh, logged into uh, SQL to the, SQ, uh, to the SQL plus uh, to unconnect it and attach to the Oracle instance. So, um, so we shut down the Oracle instance. So uh, just to see that uh, in case the instance down, obviously it's a very trivial use case here, but obviously you want to have an alert if that thing goes down. So uh, while that is actually being processed and calculated and will receive an update very soon, I will actually go over to the Windows environment, which has like a separate folder view and actually show you this as well. Uh, we have a couple of more instances here, Oracle instance in this environment. And you see already here, we have right now eight Oracle servers and Oracle instances that are displayed. So we can actually see the health of the different environments. And we actually see we have here uh, issue with one of the table spaces that has not enough free space. Uh, and as well, we have like a steady going up of the memory utilization and also could look at the CPU utilization here as well. Uh, other key performance uh, indicators are seen here in the graph. Um, if you wonder how the environment is built up from an, uh, from an uh, class perspective, that means like how the diagram would look. If you look at Oracle, you can open the diagram view. Um, so here in this case, we have one uh, Windows server, which actually hosts all eight Oracle instances. So um, we have different instances here, starting like prod, prod uh, business info BI, and then prod SAP and so on. And underneath here, we have on the one side, the database uh, with the control files, leader logs and table spaces, which is then being discovered. And on the other side, we actually have the, the instance information. So uh, with the processes and system global area and that type of information. So you might wonder why this is split a lit. Uh, main reason here is that uh, in case you have a real application cluster, you actually have one database and two or more Oracle database instances. So in that case, the, um, the environment would look a bit different. So uh, it then actually has a separate view, which we have seen here on the Oracle cluster. We have a separate set of views for that in case you're using an real application cluster. All right, so uh, obviously this is like the uh, the discovery which will happen and um, we have some customers that actually ask us well I, I'm actually interested in in what version we have so and then and also like what is actually the license we're running on there and what is my Oracle home and and those type of details so this information as well as discovered and uh, you can see this as the property of a class or of like an object so if you have the object the instance object here then actually you will see that uh, we have the instance type here we have the version we have the instance role we have a home here in the in the brackets you see actually the that we have an enterprise edition license, but you could also have a standard edition uh, license here. Uh, and we see Rack is not configured, and we also don't have an active node in a Rack environment, or also cluster ID is empty because this is not set up as a cluster. Um, on the other side, we also have the database. So the database has like a log mode setting and has a character setting and other details. You can also see here as well uh, that are mapped to the um, object. If you go down all the way to, for example, the uh, uh, the table space level, you see here details on the table space level. If you, for example, interested, is that table space actually here something uh, that is included in our backup? You can actually see that. And um, contents are temporary. It's a temp table space. And uh, this is under table space. And you can actually see permanent. You can actually also see the configured size to that. So that is uh, that is pretty, pretty um, good information from what we think. Um, we have received information on that that is useful. Uh, that can also be seen in the state views. So if you kind of have a, like a better overview, you can actually go to the to DB structures um, subfolder, then open all the table space and say, well, we have here, for example, the sizes, but we would like to also to have an overview uh, of what table spaces we have, uh, for example, which are with the content or like extent management, like if this is auto extend or local extend. So we can actually then see all the information in here uh, right at one view. We fully support a pluggable database, container database concept of 12C. Uh, so in case you're using those, that is uh, fully supported. 
Um, Table-based monitoring as such is a, is a big uh, topic besides obviously availability. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there are like over 70 monitors. You wonder where are those now? So let me show you. Um, let's start at the instance, for example. Let's, let's pick the server, server state. And let's pick the server state and we open the Health Explorer right here. So in the Health Explorer, we can actually then unfold the, uh, the monitors. So as to usual for all other management pack from Microsoft, they are split here into availability, performance, configuration, and security. Uh, we have the availability of the instance. So we just don't monitor just if the inf instance is available, but other monitors flow into that as well. For example, we uh, look at the backup. So um, if you're using your RMAN recovery manager for backup, then we actually make sure that uh, the RMAN backups are uh, correctly done and we monitor them. We have incremental or full backup. We also monitor the last backup completed that, that in case, for example, you define like a, a backup interval of 24 hours, so one backup a day. Then you actually can uh, configure uh, here a threshold, default is 30 hours. So uh, if uh, there's no backup done after 30 hours, you obviously missed something or the backup software missed something and you would like to have an alert to actually uh, then be informed about that. Um, well, there are more backup monitors for here and here. We actually then have as well monitoring for the data guard environment. So in case there's a data guard, we have these monitors here, which will then uh, provide data on the data guard environment with supply lag, destination hours, gap count, and so on. So uh, as well, then we go on and we actually see here read log and we have a roll-up of the so-called roll-up monitor of the table space availability. So we can then drill down, we'll see the different table spaces here. And then uh, in the table space, we see table space status and table space availability status, segment status, and free extends percent free. We are regarded also as availability monitors since if the table space is full, then uh, we uh, do not have space available. So that is basically the background. So, but but on the other hand, we also have the, um, the performance side. So in the performance, we have also uh, tons of monitors, either in the instance or in the database side. So let's first uh, look at the, um, at the database side. Here, the main thing is that the table spaces again, and the table space, uh, as we have uh, like the free space already in the availability, we have more like the fragmentation, for example, in here. So we see fragmentation and temp uh, segment usage, for example. Most of the performance actually on the instance side because the instance has all the in-memory and all the, the queries that are running on there, the I.O., the cache, everything, the buffer pools, everything is on the on the instance side. So uh, here we can actually see, for example, in the SGA area, we see buffer pool cache hit ratio. We see other hit ratios in here in the system global area. And then we have a lot of session monitors. Um, and you see many of those don't have that uh, green check in the circle, that actually means they're disabled. Uh, many of our monitors are delivered disabled by default. Um, we basically only enable a best practice set of monitors that are used by many customers. So, and um, if you start for a POC or even like to go to rollout production, we highly recommend that you actually use our reference guide. And this reference guide is for, available for download on our customer portal. And this reference guide contains all the monitors and all the performance rules. And then um, we recommend to uh, do a meeting with the database administrators and uh, other uh, staff involved to review those. And then they will actually say, well, I actually only need like 10 monitors. Some actually go out and say, well, I need only those 10 monitors, but they are really important. And if they have, if these monitors turn red, I immediately want to have an alert even. And for those five, I want to have an on-call uh, message to the to the pages or, or like some other alerting functionalities associated to that. This can all be implemented very easily. And if you start with the reference guide, create a little list and from the list then set the overrides. Let's say you also set the thresholds differently. You disable the monitors or enable monitors for those you need. And then you can via SCOM uh, configure the, the subscription for alerting, SMS subscription or any other channels in SCOM you want to use. Okay, so uh, as I can't, I will not touch every monitor here now. So. Uh, there are, as I said, there are tons and some of them, they have detailed uh, knowledge on here. So in case you're not sure if that 
what that monitor actually do. Feel free to uh, read through the summary, give some information, we give some information on the configuration. And if you're still not really sure and have additional questions on on some of the information in here, you can use the link which we provide, which gives you gets you directly to the the Oracle Help Center, and in the Oracle Help Center, we directly then link towards the uh, the concept that are in here. So uh, that 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 really should provide you some additional background on the, and information. So uh, with that, I'm I'm pretty much covered here on this side. Oh, let's see if we actually get an alert here. So if the instance is down, oh yes, we got it. So we actually have an alert here and say, well, the instance is down. Our diagram should be fully red now here. So okay, we see actually we have a red um, icon here. Um, ASM, the ASM instance is still running, so we didn't shut down ASM. So here we see actually Oracle is down and we see this on the instance side. We have the database and instance again. And if you go in on here and open the Health Explorer, we actually see instance status fails and TNS connection status as well. So, uh, and uh, now I should go back in and start it up. So, um, so I'll start it up. And uh, the beauty in SCOM is that in case um, database do, database admins do some, um, or have some problems and resolve them, it will also resolve our alerts automatically. It will close them again, so this way we don't need to go in there and close them manually. Uh, it's really, a, I, I think, a, a, a great advantage not to go in and always close automatically those alerts. So, uh, um, of course, if you have alert rules from, from Oracle Alert Log, they will not close automatically, uh, but all the alerts coming through the SCOM monitors will do so. Um, one more view I'd like to show you, which is the, the heat map, table space size and usage. So uh, this is uh, to get it done with a uh, visualization library from Veeam, uh, which is which is also available uh, as a free add-on. So uh, there's nothing you need to purchase in addition to that. Uh, that actually has a view of all the table spaces and their sizes. Uh, it gives you a really good quick view on where your problem errors might be and your problem is secure. So uh, that should help you to identify um, yeah, hot spots quickly. Um, so what more? Yeah, I, let me actually show you, like, we have some tasks. So um, let's have the use case. Somebody logs into their Oracle SQL environment. It's, a, it's a, just a user or actually a new application gets deployed and suddenly everything is slow. So uh, it's just like patch day and, and a couple of hours after the patches have been rolled out for the, for the application where the backend Oracle database runs, suddenly, suddenly the database is getting slow. So you then obviously you can identify that there was a change and then you'd like to know the application team calls you and say, well, you know what's going on in the Oracle database, can you have a look? And actually you will receive an alert. The alert will then come typically from the, the query monitoring, say, well, there are queries that are running long or using a lot of CPUs. So uh, these queries um, are in a monitor that is associated to the, um, to the instance or better to say to the system global area. So that would be actually here SG uh, performance and then SGA. So for example, like table with, uh, like queries with full table scans. This is often the case if an index is missing, index has dropped, or you need to create a new index in that case. So in that case, you'll actually see an alert coming in and this alert will give you also additional information. But in case that doesn't fire, but you still want to have a look or your DBAs like to have a look, you can actually go in here. Um, the instance should come up in a moment again. Um, and run the, the on-demand tasks. Here on the right side, you see a number of tasks which are actually there for real-time uh, monitoring. So you can actually, in real time, execute like this task from the SCOM console on one or many Oracle servers and ask them to give you basically information back on which are the queries that are running in my environment right now. We'll come back with like a list of queries as you would expect basically that gives you the SQL ID and saying, well, my actually my longest running, or in this case, we have the uh, SQL statement with full table scans. We have actually uh, rows, rows processed by this query here, and this is the query ID. And then we can actually go back with this query ID to our Oracle DBA, and they typically have their own tools being a, a quest tool or like an Oracle tool, and then look up this and from there actually dig further in and find out what the problem is. Um, um, 
So these, these tasks are available. Uh, that's to actually should just show you what power is in this management pack. Um, you can extend this to recovery or diagnostic task within SCOM. Um, that actually means like if there's an issue that could be out automatically addressed, you can actually implement that in the authoring console. We have some of those implemented or some diagnostic tasks implemented that retrieve additional information. So let's, one for example is the, the invalid packages. If new invalid packages appear in your database, obvious next question is, what are those packages? Who got them in? Who is the owner? Which application belong them? This information then will be immediately answered to you by the by the diagnostic task. Um, maybe I should show you this just a moment. Um, that's the last thing I promise. So let's quickly go in here and show you where the invalid package and the recovery uh, diagnostic task are. So uh, invalid or Oracle objects. Um, it says the diagnostic task provides a list of invalid objects. Obviously, as we don't have invalid objects, the task doesn't show, but it would actually then come up here and you could run it. So uh, it is it's right in here, or you could actually see it in the monitor configuration, which I have access in here. So actually here, this is the, the task that will run for the uh, to determine the invalid objects then and give them back. Okay, so I've showed you quite a lot and don't want that you get bored right now. So um, any other questions? Yeah, ah, yes, reporting. There's one item I should mention is reporting. Um, reporting um, is available, sure, sure enough. So we have a number of predefined reports available here. So you see you have a, ton, a lot of table spaces and obviously the question is, which of those table spaces is growing the fastest or which of the table spaces is soon going to be full? So in this, we actually then have here on the right side, the table space free extent report or free percentage report. Let's take the free percentage report. Um, you can actually go in here, open this and say bottom up, or you can get the top three or the, which have the least free or the most free. Then pick your time range. You can add or remove some of the objects and then you can actually just run the report. And it should give you some an overview. I have to warn you though, because this will, the data you will see is created by a simulator. We have like a number of simulation tools for performance testing of our product. So, uh, and also for demonstration purposes. So uh, uh, the data here in the table space is pretty much going up and down. So we actually add data and remove data. Uh, so, uh, so we get like a, a pretty, Rough up and down, but we see actually the day the the, um, the table space with the least percent free is actually uh, sysox on the ORCL instance here, and you actually see well we have only like something like here like 32, 33 percent free, and uh, if you would like be interested now, um, what is actually the change over time? So like how much has been this growing? You can actually then click on this. Um, pillar and then drill down and we see a little graph here which actually shows us the size development of the um, of the of the table space over the last time so you see uh, it's been anywhere between 20 and 60 percent full so this is as I said it's a by by monitor so it just goes up and down but we don't see like a negative trend that it would just go up and reach at one point the 80 percent 90 percent and so on and then create a possible issue for you um, if you would like to use the data for, for forecasting, you can actually take the data here from the table and you actually see all the detailed table data in here. You can publish this, you can schedule these reports, you can email them. They're very, um, yeah, very much customizable what you can do with them. So uh, this is just one report. There are more reports in a number of uh, different areas. We have, like as mentioned in the beginning, 70 different performance rules, and you can select any of those to write your data into data warehouse. Once it's in the data warehouse, then you can actually use it for, for reporting and take forward. Okay, so I think, um, yeah, one area is uh, I mentioned in the beginning, I just want to recap a little bit on that. It's the log file monitoring. There are no monitors, there are only rules for log file monitoring. In that case, actually, we monitor the Oracle alert log. And uh, you can just search for Aura Dash, which are the typically 
the entries in the Oracle alert log. So if you go in here, then actually it will uh, bring up our predefined performance rules for the Oracle alert monitoring. So everything with an Aura 600, so 6XX, anything in there will give you an alert, for example. So, and how is that configured? So uh, this is actually using the regular expression uh, language. So in the regular expression language, you can actually define what ranges you'd like to be alerted off. And as I mentioned also earlier, is this is a it's an open management pack, so you can actually go in there and change that. You can just edit it here in the console, or also use a text editor on the Oracle uh, log file XML file that is delivered with the product. So uh, with that, I think I'll pretty much come to the end of my presentation here. So uh, I showed you various areas. We have a very deep class model, a lot of monitors on here. We do ASM monitoring, cluster monitoring, data guard monitoring. I didn't touch on all the performance uh, views we have in the product. There are, again, like over 50 performance views. You can actually go in here in any area. Let's say you'd like to have an overview of the I.O. rate. Uh, just get a quick overview. That's very fast, very easily accessible. And we have customers with many hundreds of the Oracle databases. This product scales along with SCOM very good. So uh, if there are any questions later, please feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, uh, I thank you for your attendance uh, of this webinar. And uh, if you want to have like more personalized session to look at your environment, um, you can reach out to our solution team. With that, good day and thank you. Goodbye.